Alright guys, so in this video, we will see how we can paint the human figures at the front in the foreground right there. And we are going to start off by using that yellow tone and using my brush, I'm just going to mix this yellow tone with some orange. And of course, leaving the patterns on um, her costume white. So I use darker and lighter orange hues on her dress. And you can see right there, I'm not just using the same orange, but I'm trying to change the orange from lighter orange by adding the yellow and to darker orange by adding the brown. And so we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, colors that we use in order to paint all these different orange and different shades of orange and yellows and browns on her um, dress, right, on the costume. So again, leaving out the white areas um, for the details to be painted on later. So there are some patterns on her dress, which will be painted on um, later. And I will use different colors to paint those patterns on her dress. So again, right here, you can see that there's yellow, there's orange, and there's this dark brown. And uh, we can see that we have all these, you know, um, colors that are being mixed together. And so we have this um, very, very amazing kind of uh, combination of colors within that same object. And so these are very um, nice things that we can actually gain, you know, uh, by just looking at that a part of the painting where you can see all these different shades of orange and that is something which is quite satisfying to actually see. Alright, so right here we can also see that um, this dark kind of browns are being added and of course the bottom part there we can see um, a lot of darker kind of uh, strokes. Right, so we have all these orange tones that are being combined with those dark uh, kind of strokes which again is done using the dry brush method and you can see that we have all these different kinds of um, browns and orange and that will give a lot of very very nice kind of folds right so those dark strokes actually are done to add you know those folds that you're seeing right now and uh, we can see that there is you know all these things and i use a small brush to paint pink and green hues for the flower patterns but first we will use this red so using that small brush i'm adding this red paint onto some of the um, areas that were that are being left white and so right here we have you know this pattern that is being painted because of this um, small brush right so we will paint some of the red tones and we will combine it with some of the dark tones below and so by painting you know this thing separately we can see that the dress is actually made up of all these different patterns not just orange but you know different shades of orange different dark shades dark strokes for the folds and also all these patterns so there's a lot of things that we can gain from this one um, object itself and so we have all these you know different kinds of colors and all these different kinds of shades different tones and you know lighter tones to the left and darker tones to the right the bottom right again using different kinds of reds for the same pattern right there and so this changing element is something uh, which is very important to um, artists and watercolors, color artists out there. Because these changes will help um, the viewer to um, be able to see all these amazing things that are happening um, that may not even be visible on uh, the photograph itself. But um, by painting all these subtle differences, that will 
um, be able to include all these very nice color changes and that will attract the viewer more to look at the painting. Right, so all these are very, very important kind of concepts and all these important techniques. And right now we are just moving on to the rest of the patterns. Again, utilizing the same kind of techniques and the same kind of um, ways. And I actually added some greens and some purples. So that is how I actually add all these patterns. Right, so doing the same thing for the orange dress on top, adding some red strokes to show all these um, warm tones and of course adding in some of the light red once the part is dry so now those parts that are left white are being added with those red strokes right so using a, a brown kind of tone I just painted the skin tone of a body and then later on I'm just going to use some of my brush and to add more dark um, strokes for the shadow that is cast because of the arm so I used the subtly different dark browns to paint the hair, showing all these subtle tone changes. Right, so that is how I used my brush to create all these small little changes within that hair. And uh, we can have, you know, all these um, browns, very subtle browns and combine it with blacks so that <clears throat> the hair is not just black but it consists of different brown tones as well. Right, so we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, black tones, which are also combined with the browns. Okay, using that small brush, we are able to come to control. So one advantage of doing this is that we can see that the hair becomes softer because it is not just black lump but there is all this brown to kind of like show there's some kind of softening effect on the hair and um, we are now moving on towards the front part of the hair. So you can see right now I'm using the brush, the small little brush to help me with the rest of the hair. Right, so very important thing to take note is we don't want to paint um, outside of the allotted area. So the hair must stay within the same area. And so this will help us to make it more neat. And we have enough space to actually paint the face later. So using the small little brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these, you know, different tones. We have light browns, we have... Um, this area that is left white because of the sunshine on the hair. And so right now we are moving on to... Alright, so I just I, I just covered up that area because um, I want that brown tone to kind of like, you know, cover up the hair. So using all these browns, I'm actually doing the face and the arms and, you know, there's all these very nice um, kind of a browns that are actually used to do her skin tones. And you can see right now, the woman, the lady is actually coming out alive, you know, and I'm just trying to add all these brown paint to the right hand side. And we can see that, you know, now we have some brown paint to the right and using that red paint, we are now starting to paint this woman to the left. All right, so again, using different kinds of reds to paint the cape and <coughs> using all these, you know, darker kind of reds to do the top. So more intense reds, less intense reds, darker reds, lighter reds, and orange reds, and, you know, dull reds. All these kinds of different reds are being done for this one particular um, object alone. And again, as I mentioned, um, using all these different colors will indeed enhance your painting. So this is done by adding a lighter stroke of red on top and you can see that, you know, this is separated by that black stroke in the middle which um, symbolizes that that fold of, of the cape, right? So this woman is actually bending downwards and uh, we can see that we have all these orange tones and red tones and, you know, light tones. And again, using that brush, we are trying to add all these dark reds. So these dark reds are being added because we will have all these, you know, 
different kinds of uh, tones. And again, now trying to complete the right hand side. So I'm um, adding in the first layer of grey and then adding in some of the textures and strokes for the ground on top. So using a very dark red, I'm actually doing the bottom part, a very dark brown, okay, combined with a little bit of red. So this dark brown relates directly with the red because red and brown are very close. And we are now moving on towards the bottom part of the painting. So using that small brush, just making sure that all the details are in. And we have all these, you know, um, different kinds of uh, textures and color changes and um, leaving white and then adding in some of the colors on later. So these are some very interesting changes that you can do with your brush. And so using the brush, I just kind of like make sure we have all these different strokes and all these different kinds of uh, color um, matchings, uh, the browns and the reds, the different kinds of colors that you can see right there. And they're all relating to each other because they are from the same zone in the color wheel. And that will give us a very nice visual effect. Right, so using my brush, just trying to make sure that we have all this orange in. And using that small brush, just trying to complete some of the details. And then we have some of the uh, things that are being filled in right now. Just making sure that everything is in place before we actually embark on the bottom part. Right, so now, now we have this... Um, top part being done and we have um, this little bun, um, this little part, red part that is behind the head, behind her hair and that is to show the kind of like the connection between the cape and her body and that is done using that um, strong kind of red and using my brush I'm just trying to um, paint some of the reds and some of the, you know, um, red strokes that are coming down. So using my brush, the small brush and a large brush, I'm just trying to complete this area and just trying to make sure that everything is in place before we move downwards. Alright, so we have um, this small brush that is being done um, in order to paint some of the areas at the bottom and so we have all these you know different things that you know we can do and using that small brush just trying to paint some of the red areas at the bottom so again trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of uh, strokes and lines and so on and so forth that will make up most of the um, colors and most of the things that we see. And so by using my small little brush, I'm trying to uh, kind of like combine these browns together using my finger to remove a little bit of that brown tone and just using some of the, my small little brush to actually help me with that. Okay, so we can see right now that the woman here is coming alive as well. So we have those uh, different kinds of reds that are being, you know, combined together and also those dark strokes that show the folds of the costume. And we are now moving on towards the um, painting <clears throat> of her body. Right, so we have all this, you know, different kinds of uh, reds and different kinds of uh, colors, different kinds of um, these strokes, darker brush strokes that are done because I used my brush to actually um, paint it and to do it. Right, so these are very, very important kind of uh, ways that we want to make sure that, you know, we have everything in place by combining dark strokes with light strokes and by combining um, those lighter strokes 
with uh, some of the changing colors and so on and so forth. So these are very, very um, good ways that we can do all these details. And you can see right there, I'm actually using green and pink because this um, dress that she's wearing right there have some flowers, flower patterns. And so I'm using the green to represent the leaves and the pink to represent the flowers, which we will see later as I continue to do the dress. So right now, I'm using my brush to kind of like paint the back of her head. Okay, so as we continue on, we're just trying to make sure that this part is well rendered. And so we will have all these different colors and different kinds of uh, light tones and dark tones that are being combined. All right, so right now, um, the leaves and the flower right there is almost dry. So I'm using the brush and using some water to kind of like combine this area so that we have this light background that is actually making up um, her dress. Okay, so we have the use of this small little brush to help me with finishing up the dress. Okay, so you can see right now that, you know, we are using all these very nice kind of colors. And of course, this um, brown right there is done for her skin tone. And then we have all these browns that are used to uh, paint some of the um, darker kind of uh, skin tone at the bottom part right there and her body, her belly with the shadows that is being cast. Alright, so we are now using those red tones in order to paint the flower patterns on the uh, on her dress at the bottom part and so using some green dark green tones to also paint to represent those leaves that you see just below those uh, flowers and those you know, just below those um, flower patterns that you see. And so we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, flowers and leaves using just a few strokes of the brush. We're able to do that. And then later on, we will use the um, small brush to um, spread out all these lighter colors that will make up the background. And this background is actually spreading out a little bit, combining a little bit with all those flowers and leaves because they are not yet completely dry. And so this slight blending and slight um, combining of colors when they are still not dry is actually, you know, something that is very, very nice to look at. So again, adding in a little more strokes for the trees, uh, for, for the leaves. And then using my um, small little brush, I'm just trying to combine all these different parts together. All right, so we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, background and all these uh, things that are being added. And so let's um, move on to the final part of this painting, this little dress right there. So the main thing is we need to have all these different things that are going on and that will help us to be able to, you know, combine all these different areas. And you can see right now that the dress with all those flower and leaves patterns is actually coming out very well with the light um, grey kind of background. And right now I'm actually using the brush to paint the skin tone on her face. So right there we have, you know, some of the browns that are being added to her face. And I'm just trying to make sure that we have all the skin tones covered with the ear right there. And also trying to make sure that because she's bending downwards, her nose can be seen. So these are some very, very useful kind of ways that we can use to depict you know, all these uh, different things. So making sure that the eyes and the nose and the, the eyes and the mouth area are very, are darker as compared to the rest. And this part that is sticking out is actually the nose. All right, so we have all these, you know, different kinds of browns, different kinds of uh, reds. 
and different kinds of colors that are being combined together to show all these different details and all these subtly changing kind of colors. Right, so we have dark red, green and brown, and we are now going to paint the reflections in the water. So right now the reflections here is pretty dark because of the shadow that is cast on the water and of course we know that there's a lot of stuff in that water and so um, there's a lot of colors that is used to represent the waters of the Ganges, right? Because um, it really reflects a lot of colors. So we are now using the dark tone and we are combining it with the brown tone and we are just trying to use all these dark colors in order to paint all these different areas. So using my small little brush, I'm just trying to combine, you know, that orange with um, the red and um, just trying to make sure that we have all these different colors that are combined together. And uh, we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, browns and different kinds of um, greens and different kinds of uh, dark colors. Again, just trying to make sure that we have the reflections being done right. So right there, I just added some dark reds. So this dark red is being combined with the dark browns, being, uh, which is being combined with the, the grays there, which serves as a transition between the red and the darker areas and the green. And so these are some ways that we can combine all these different colors and they will be able to be reflected within that particular zone which is the um, reflections right and so we have all these things that are being added right now that shows all these very nice patterns that is formed because of the reflections and using my small little brush and also my large brush i'm just trying to complete all these different areas you know just trying to use the water to wash away those parts that will be left white and using some of the small brush to paint in those brown tones that will be um, added because of this, you know, reflections and all these different colors that we can see right there. And so you can see all these very subtle changes and very, very nice kind of uh, tones and um, gray tones and all these dark reds. And all these things can really uh, make the painting very vibrant because even though it's dark, you can see all these color changes within the dark zone with a little bit of light to show this kind of uh, reflections as well. All right, so these are some very, very useful techniques that are actually used to paint the um, water that you're seeing right now, again, using that dark green and dark blue. So when we combine greens with blues, that will give us this dark green and this done for the water on the left hand side and of course using those brush strokes those free flowing brush strokes to create those ripples that you see on the water right so using that dark blue we are combining it with the black the dark zone and combining it with the green and also combining it with the dark browns and the purples and everything and so we have these purples dark purples that are being added to be combined with the rest of the green, right? So again, when we have all these different colors, this actually show the kind of, uh, you know, the different colors that is being reflected because of the water. And again, having those light areas for some of the water and some dark areas for the uh, ripples and everything. All right, so this is something which is very, very nice to paint and actually to see being painted because all these colors are attracting the attention of the viewer and I'm actually showing how the water can be painted from all these different kinds of colors and techniques and strokes and combinations of colors and so on and so forth. So that's what I would like to share in this painting, in this video. Hey everyone, it's KY Tom here. 
Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button and comment down below. Do consider to subscribe to my channel for more art videos. Check out the links on the description below to find out more about my art and I hope to see you in the next one.